right, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Investor. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss the September effect and how it might affect our high income ETFs. So I hope everyone had a happy Labor Day weekend. I took a few days off, it was great. And now we're gonna discuss high yield income ETFs and if they'll be affected in the month of September. So as we know, the stock market historically goes down in the month of September. So since 1928 through 2023, the S&P 500 index has averaged a decline during the month of September. So we're going to figure out if this is going to affect our high income ETFs. Will it lower our income? Will it lower our share prices? We also have the ex-dividend date coming up for yield max, which of course I'll be making a video on. So you can see declaration date will be 9-5, which is Thursday this week. And the ex-dividend date will be on Friday. It will get paid out on Monday 9-9-2024. So it's going to be great to see what the payments are going to be from the yield max ETFs because we did have a volatile August and that should yield some high income from some of these ETFs. If we go into my portfolio here, you can see on Robinhood, I'm sitting at $27,882. Let's go into the performance here, down 0.82% in the past week. In the past month, we're up 2.27%. In the past three months, I'm up 1.8%. Year to date, we're well past half of a year. I'm up 7.2% high income ETFs only in this portfolio. And then in the past year, up 5.67%. So not fantastic performance in the past year. Year to date is pretty good. But if you take a look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, we are underperforming those indexes, but we're high income focused and usually high income ETFs underperform the growth stocks. My portfolio consists of Tesla, Kony, NVIDIA, Misty, WiMAX, QDTE, which will reinvest the dividends today at market open. So you can see my price return. Turn. I'm down 4.61%, down $511, 250 shares, 38% of the portfolio. So my largest position in Robinhood here. But if we scroll down, you can see dividend reinvestment, $78.40. And that is being reinvested this morning. And that'll purchase me just over one and a half shares. So I'm excited to earn more income for the next week. They usually announce the distributions on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. So I'm excited to see what it's going to be. I hope the for around 30 cents again. But if we do see a volatile month of September, share prices up and down in the market, that is good for these high income ETFs such as QDTE. Because as we saw with their distributions in August, when the stock market was going up and down like crazy, we had a quick correction and then it bounced back. We saw high distributions every single week with this ETF up to 56 cents per share. In turn, we kind of want a volatile till September because then we're going to receive more distributions from this ETF. If we take a look at price return, it is down 8.24% for the past year. A lot of ups and downs. You saw when we had that quick correction, this ETF went down to $40.10 per share, which is not a big deal because we're getting compensated with those distributions. And then overall return with this ETF, it's up between 5 and 10% so far since the inception date. I also have a high income ETF portfolio in M1 Finance. This one's a little more balanced. I would say the distribution yield on average for this portfolio is around 10 to 15%. That's because I have some quarterly payers as well as monthly payers in here. But you can see in the past month, I'm up 2.11% with this portfolio market gain, $1,400, which is fantastic. And dividends earned 135. I have a pending buy of $20.21. Those trades will be reinvested. So let's take a look here that I'm going to buy $18.20 of QQQY and S fall is going to get $1.99. So I'm excited to reinvest my distributions in here and continue this snowball effect. If you want to take a look at some of the positions I have in here, and we go in the past month, XLU performed the best over August. You can see it was up 6.82%. VNQ up 4.65%. SBHD up 4%. August was a great month for this portfolio. And we'll see what happens in September. If it goes down, that's fine. I'm still going to receive the income from these ETFs. And I'll show you exactly exactly how much I'm going to be making for the month of September in this portfolio. You can see the worst performer that we had in this portfolio in August was QQQY down 7.23%, but not a big deal. We're going to get a nice big payment from QQQY this month. So if we go into holdings, dividend income, September 2024 is going to be my highest month ever from distributions in this portfolio. So QQQY is going to pay me $181.38, Tesla around $73, $75, JEPQ 
paying 26.25. Even if the share prices go down in the month of September in this portfolio, this $381 will get reinvested back in buy at those lower share prices and then pay me more again in the month of October. Right now, October is showing 239, but they don't account for large distributions from some of the ETFs that I have in here because they weren't announced yet. So this is just estimated, but I think this chart, as you can see for the past few months, is basically just going straight up every single month. And I mean, you know, March was a big month, $286 I received, but since then it has just gone straight up in the portfolio. And maybe by the end of the year, this portfolio will be making $500 per month with the very low amount invested. You could see here, $20,898 is not a lot of money to have invested to be able to make three to $400 per month in distribution income. And this is quality income because if we go into all time, you can see I'm up 37.13%. And then with this portfolio, the income income slice, I'm up 16.41%. So this is quality income, $500 per month, getting reinvested into quality ETFs. And that's why prices go down in September. That's fine. I'm going to continue to add to this portfolio, continue to reinvest. Let's go into my dividend tracker here. You guys can sign up with it with the link in the description down below. I really enjoy it. You can see my monthly average kind of went down, updated in September, monthly average 1500, September income estimated for 1500. This annual income was close closer to $20,000 last month, but it will get updated as the announcements come out, especially with like the distribution schedule and how much I'm going to make for the month of September. This will update and get closer back to 20,000 annual income because I really didn't sell anything and these ETFs haven't went through a dividend cut or whatever. So this will update. No big deal. You can see September 2nd to September 8th, I'll be getting a majority of my payments. This will update to September 9th because that's when we're going to get paid from yield max. Monday, September 9th, say all of the ETFs pay the same amount as they did last month in August. But like I said, August was a very volatile month, so I might see high distributions from the yield max ETFs. I'll be receiving about $53 from Kony, Misty, another 15 bucks, basically, NVIDI, almost 20. And then you can see my Tesla payment here, 514 shares in total combined with my M1 Finance portfolio here and my Robinhood portfolio. So I take that 411.85 and then whatever I have in M1 Finance, I add it to this. I should be just receiving about $500 this month from Tesla. That has been a great income producer for this portfolio for over a year now. I've been holding Tesla since July 2023, and now it is September 2024. So I've just been receiving great income long term from this position. I am down still on total return, but it's continuing to just pay every single month. So we'll see what happens in the next year or two. I could hold this thing for 10 years and not worry about it if it just continues to pay and those dividends get reinvested into other ETFs. I also have dividend reinvestment enabled on Robinhood. So whatever amount I get paid will get reinvested back into Tesla in this portfolio. But on my M1 finance portfolio, Tesla will pay. It'll go into the cash balance and then get reinvested into some of these other ETFs, which I would consider a little bit more high quality long term, such as JEPQ, JEPI, SCHD, which has been on fire lately hitting all-time highs and paying out their most distributions ever. Should get a nice payment from SCHD in the month of September, so I'm excited for that. And then let's go back in. Let's see what we're going to get paid the next week here. So September 9th to the 15th, we'll get a payment from DVY, which is another high-income ETF quality. QDTE, of course, is going to pay me every single week. And then YMAX should do a nice payment. We'll see what their distribution will be. Of course, I'll make a video on that as well. But $244.31, getting reinvested invested back into WiMAX. Middle of the month, towards the end, we're going to get another payment from QDTE, QQQI, SPYI, great consistent payers every single month. I get about $60 a month just from NEOS and these funds. I don't have IWMI yet in the portfolio. Maybe I'll start adding to that position as well. Include it into my M1 finance portfolio here because I don't have too many holdings, but I do have some nice holdings in here. Maybe I should start to add QDTE and XDTE in this portfolio as well, as well as IWMI, maybe even RDTE. I think this will supercharge this dividend portfolio. And I'm thinking about, you know, reallocating some money in M1 Finance to account for more high income ETFs and really get this snowball rolling in this portfolio as well. So what you can do in here is not even have to add any money.
money, I'll just add in more slices and then the distributions that I receive from these other ETFs will get funded right into RDTE, QDTE, and XDTE, which would be great, especially if the prices go down in September, I'll be getting good starting share prices for that dividend snowball in here. Then we're going to get another payment from QDTE. We're going to get a nice payment from SVOL, XLE, and XLU, which are quarterly payers. And then SCHD in this is going to pay in September as well. So that'll get added into here. Let's take a look at the past year performance of the indexes and how the prices do go down in September. It's not even going to be a big deal. Look at the past year for SPY. It's up 20, almost 25%. And we did see that, you know, drop here between July and mid July to the beginning of August and we've already bounced back from that price and are about even with all time highs that we've seen with the S&P 500. If we take a little bit of a dip here, it won't be a big deal. Like I said, our distributions may even go higher if we see a dip in September based on volatility and market selling, market pressure really boosts up those options premiums and then we get paid out that amount, which is fantastic. If S&P 500 goes down 5-10%, which would be a you know correction in September, we'd still be up 10 to 15% for the year, which is fantastic. And then if we go into QQQ, you could see in the past year with this ETF, it's up 26.44%. So outperforming the S&P 500 only by a small margin, but you could see this one hasn't recovered yet to that all time high in July 10th, but still it's up huge for the year. Like this is a not an average year. Usually on average, the S&P 500 averages 10% return per year. And that does include Include the crashes, the market corrections. So on average, we're getting about a 10% return with the overall markets. And I do have the overall markets in my Roth IRA account. If you think that I'm only invested in high yielding ETFs and I'm going to underperform long term, that's not entirely true because I do have the overall markets in my Roth IRA. And then when I'm 59 and a half, I'll be able to take out that money tax free. So we'll see what happens. But let me know what you guys think of high yielding ETFs in September. Do you think they'll go up? Because there's no guarantee that they're going to go down. But let's hope they go up. Let's hope they don't go down. But let's hope there is a little bit of volatility in September. So we get those higher distributions, get to reinvest those dividends. And then in the following months coming up in the future, we just hope for a nice steady ride up. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We have slowed down a bit. That's because I haven't uploaded as much in August, but I'm finally starting to get settled in this new condo unit. So I should be able to continue to make great videos for you guys. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys in the next one.